uh, week 12, Thursday. Next week is going to be the last week of lecture. And then the following week is your term test. Uh, your, sorry, your final exam. Okay, so we have a, about six more hours of lecture to go. So today, our agenda is 3D mode circle. So on Tuesday, we look at two conditions. Okay, so we are looking at this uh, element in 3D. So condition number one, where stress X is greater than stress Y, both are tensile. Stress Z is equal to zero. Okay, so what we have is we realize that uh, the the tau max is in the xz plane, which is the outer plane. Okay, so the outer plane carries the uh, or, or 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 has the maximum shearing stress. Then we have another condition. Okay, using still using this element. Okay, where we have condition number two. Stress X is positive, stress Y negative, stress Z equal to zero. Now the maximum shear stress is, is the one that is in plane. Okay, let me how to do. Okay, which is the, the, the in plane has the maximum shear stress. So a thing to take note is how you calculate tau max for condition number one, tau max is equal to sigma of maximum stress divided by two. Whereas where you have a condition where stress X is positive, stress Y is negative, your maximum shear stress is equal to uh, uh, maximum normal stress plus by uh, minimum normal stress divided by two. Okay. So now we are going to do condition number three. Then okay, we're going to continue today, condition number three. is where we have uh, stress X is less than stress Y and less than stress Z, okay? and all are positive. Okay, so none of the stress state is equal to zero now, okay? None of the stress state is equal to zero. So now we sketch a uh, mole circle in 3D. How does this look like now? Okay. So again, over here, is our normal stress. Okay. So everything is positive now. So just I will reduce the negative area. So this is shearing stress, uh, element rotate clockwise, element rotate anti-clockwise, and we have our stress X, stress Y, and stress Z line. So now I'm going to sketch them. So I'm going to have this as my stress X. And then we have our stress Y. And finally, we have our stress Z line. Okay. So we comply to the condition where stress Z is greater than stress Y. Stress Y is greater than stress X, and all are positive. So we also know that this is our point X on the element on mole circle. Point Y so here is point Z. Then we can start constructing circles now. And we know that over here, this is for our xy plane and we know that the xy plane is our in plane okay 
and then the next one our uh, y z plane okay then i'm going to draw our next one which is our y z plane okay, so this circle represent our y z plane and for this case, it is out of plane. Now, some of you might be a bit confused. Why is that so? Because we are we, our reference element. Okay, so this is the element that we are still using, right? That we have on Tuesday. So the xy plane has a bigger surface area is in plane. The xz and the yz plane are the smaller surface area. So those are the ones that are our plane. So we have another circle to draw that will touch point X and point Z. So our third circle. Okay. So this is our uh, XZ plane. which is our out of plane. And then what we realize, because the exact plane has the biggest the, uh, diameter circle, so we can draw a line across here, right? And then we can say that over here, our max, Or which is at our uh, exact plane. Is equal to tau max. For the entire or for the entire 3D mole circle. OK, so this is our, as you can see, it's our out plane. So when that's the case, under this situ uh, situation, we know that tau max will be equal to uh, stress X plus by stress Z and we divide by two. And we're going to let stress X, okay, stress X is, is this point over here. And this is our stress minimum. And our stress Z is our maximum. Okay, so this is the point. So from here, tau max will be equal to stress max plus by stress mean divided by two. Okay. So condition number three. Okay, condition number three. Uh, 3D mole circle analysis uh, have to be used. You cannot use 2D on this, okay? Right, so we have seen all three condition now okay so let's do one uh very let's construct a 3d mode circle okay with values that are given okay how to how to do this with values okay i think that's more important so let's look at uh example number one So we have a element here. Yeah, I'll draw my our transformation first. So this is X, Y, and Z. We have a element. Right. 
3D element. And in this element, on the on this face, you got 50 megapascal. And then over here, you have 10 megapascal. And then you have a uh, negative shear configuration. Okay. And this is 40 megapascal. So we're going to construct 3D mold circle. Okay, so we're going to label this. All right, we're going to label this. This is for X okay, on mold circle later on. This surface will be our Y on mold circle. And this will be our Z. So if we were to look at the stress state, right? If we now were to look at the, our uh, stress state. We know that stress X is equal to minus 50 megapascal. Uh, we know that stress Y is equal to 10 megapascal. And then we also know that uh, stress Z, oops, sorry, stress Z is equal to zero there's no stress here x y is going to share y x and this is equal to minus 40 megapascal but as you know uh, in shear negative positive does not matter it's more important is the rotation of the element okay so now we can construct 3d mold circle now okay so I'm going to change the view now. So again, the same thing. Okay, 3D, uh, 3D mold circle uh, uses a lot of concept from 2D, right? Where the points are, and then uh, it's like 2D. Okay, the only thing is we have three circles now. Okay, so this is our uh, normal stress. So we have minus 80, 60, 40, 20, 0, 20, 40. So that is our normal stress. And then we have our shearing stress or our shear stress. Element rotate clockwise, element rotate anticlockwise, okay. So we have our stress Z, right? It's on the zero line, normal stress zero line. And then we have a 10. Oh, sorry. I forgot to label our vertical axis. So 20, 40, 60, 80, minus 20, minus 40, 60, 80. So we are going to have a positive 10, and that belongs to your stress Y. Okay, so this is our stress Y. And minus 50 on st stress X. So this is our stress X. And then we have a shear of 40, right? So shear does not matter if it's just four, negative 40 or positive 40. You have to construct on the positive and the negative side. Okay, so positive 40, and then we have the negative 40. Okay. So let's start with what we know. So point X, is on minus 50 line, right? So we go look at minus 50. And then when you put your finger on the center over here, the 40 will rotate the element in a clockwise manner. Okay, so now we know that this over here 
is our point X. And then the other side you have in 10. Okay. And then when you put your finger in the center, this over here, right, this here over here will induce a uh, anti-clockwise rotation. So this is our point Y. So by knowing these two same thing, we are going to draw a straight line across. All right. So from here, we know that the stress average is at negative 20. Okay. So this over here is our point O. Or you can you can very easily calculate this, right? So we can calculate like uh, center of circle. Or because we are focusing on x y, so this is x y plane. Okay, so the stress average is equal to minus 50 plus by 10 divided by 2. So it's equal to minus 20 megapascal. And then you can also calculate the radius, radius of the circle. Okay, so radius of the circle. Radius of circle. Okay, I wonder something wrong with my pen now. Which is tau max. So this is equal to uh, 40 squared. So square root of. Let me go back into the graph mode. Right, so we know that this distance over here 